Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a, a little review of what I'm doing this afternoon. It's 90 degrees here. My garden is full of herbs and I've decided since the rain has stopped, I think we're out of a rainy season, I am going to start drying my um, basil, which is this. I got two big bundles and I pretty much stripped this plant out by doing this, but I figured it either it'll kick in and grow another set of leaves or it'll die off but we're in Florida so good chances are it's going to keep going. There's lots of greens on it yet, enough to feed the plant. It's uh, chlorophyll that it needs. But um, there's bundles, there's two big bundles, and then I did my rosemary. Now what you see here wasn't even half of the plant. So why am I doing this? Because one, herbs are cheap and easy to grow, but they're hugely expensive to buy. And the whole goal is to keep things cheap and affordable, and to put back as much as we can in an SHTF situation before the SHTF situation happens. So, grow some herbs, put them in your flower gardens. This, this rosemary is an absolutely beautiful plant, and it actually is very bug repellent as well. He won't see anything nibbling on rosemary. But my basil has some nibbles and some brown spots. Not sure what's going on with that, but it's been super, super hot here. And the rains have just stopped so as these dry i will get rid of these leaves but i will be keeping leaves like that absolutely gorgeous and that's what i'm doing today i'm drying herbs and um, i have some oregano but it's just not really producing so i'm not sure how i'm going to handle that yet i do have it out i'm not sure if it's getting too much sun or it's just too hot i'm watering it every day it's in a hanging pot so i just don't know we'll see time will tell and um, just to give you an idea, um, this is my jackfruit that I just got this past week. But over here, that's an apple. I got some citrus in there, a couple apples, some loquats back here. My loquats, you see he's a little droopy today, even though I've watered him. This is a uh, plumeria, which is a flower, not a thing edible. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I really don't wanna put them in the yard because the yard is for growing food at this point in my life. But there's another um, loquat. I, got, I think I got three loquats and they are all going up to the off-grid property this weekend. So the back of my truck will have a box in with a garbage bag liner because I have to keep these nice and wet because of the situation we have here with the heat and no rain right now. So they're gonna to go to the off-grid property this weekend. And this is, this is the oregano. As you can see, it's not really putting off a lot, but there's some there. I don't know if it's worth trying to dry it, but I might give it a haircut. If I give it a haircut, then I'll dry it. Maybe a haircut will stimulate some growth. It usually does. Yeah, my porch is a mess. But um, just to give you an update for those that are following, this is the passion fruit I just got this past week. This is the Indian curry. It's all looking a little wilted, wilted, so I'm sure the transplant that I had to do has shocked them a little bit. I have one pepper in the garden, one still in the pot here, and I have more sprouting. These are blueberries that I took cuttings. I put root tone on, and I have them in pots that I'm keeping nice and wet, and so far they're doing really good. These have been in here over a week and they haven't wilted, so I'm really excited. And then the, um, this is a bean. A flat bean, I believe. Yep, flat bean is what it's called. And then these are a type of th thyme. And they smell really good. And I'm trying to see if I can get them rooted. When I got them, they had no roots on them. They were just cuttings. But if I can root them, then I can start drying some thyme as well. Or maybe just take some leaves and dry them and just see how that goes. This was my other little jackfruit, and when I went to separate the two, it lost its roots. I don't think he's going to make it, but we're going to keep him root-toned and trying. And then the other thing I'm doing is in here. This is my first year trying to work with a um, seed starter kit. And so far, as you can see, it's working really, really well. I just get put some more water in here because of how hot it is. Now these seeds I just put in here yesterday. And you can see I have one sprouted already, so it must like this container. So um, I got some broccoli, beefsteak tomatoes, that's what these are. These are the beefsteaks, 
I got two rows of broccoli and then I have cabbage and peppers so I got some cabbage and peppers coming in here we just got to keep them covered and try to keep them from drying out too much in this heat I have them in partial sun this only gets sun in the afternoon and I'll spin this around so that it gets out of the heat for the rest of the day and that's pretty much what I'm doing right now other than I have planted my one 16 foot garden I had some starts in here that I took out and put in the garden they were mustard greens they may not make it because the heat is so intense yet so I also planted some carrots some radishes some snap peas sugar snap peas um, what else did I plant some potatoes my, it'll be my first try at potatoes in the ground in the garden I have tried the bucket method and it did not work for me so as that stuff progresses I'll start showing you that stuff and I also have garlic this year that's doing absolutely fabulous in the ground in the garden and maybe I'll give you a shot of that before I um, end the video but I'll be right back with the garlic okay we're now outside at the back garden here this is uh, one of my eight foot beds and I planted as you can see mustard greens in here yesterday some are gonna make it some most of them are not as I can see now I have two that one and that one that are gonna make it now I may be able to propagate some more oh that one might make it too oh there's another one so we may get four mustard greens out of here which will be actually enough but I always try and plant more than what we'll need and time will tell with these and we'll have to follow up on them this was this year's um, kale as you can see it didn't do good at all look how spindly and nasty that looks we were able to get nothing and I bought close to 20 plants and they all died it was a combination of kale and collard greens and broccoli and all of it died you can see I have this fenced off that's because I have chickens and they like to get in here this is the rosemary that I took all those cuttings off of and as you can see there is a ton more I could be doing and it's really hot out here I don't know that I want to work with this anymore today I'll process that then I'll come give it another haircut before it gets frostbitten this is another project that I have ongoing and that's my bananas it's hard to film because the Sun is right over my head but we have a lot of bananas growing right now this is probably 50 to 60 pounds right here and then if you look back in there there's another probably 50 60 maybe up to 70 pounds of bananas and I've had to prop this tree up as you can see this tree had to be propped up otherwise it would fall before it would finish feeding these baby bananas and they are starting to round out a little bit up here you look see how square some of these are when they start rounding out like this then you're getting closer to a harvest this would be my first harvest for bananas this year and I've moved a banana baby and this thing was so little when I moved it and this is just one year's of gr actually three months growth if that but you can see it's a lot taller than I am <laughs> and you can hear my girls and it's already putting out pups so we got some baby bananas my girls are in there say hey girls chuck, chuck, chuck. this is my water catchment system this is to be able to provide water in our non rainy rainy seasons and it is plumbed into the ground under the ground to the gardens and this side here is plumbed into the ground over to the gardens as you can see the white pipes that's all PVC we handed this whole project ourselves we paid about $25 a piece for the water totes they hold about 250 some gallons of um, water each and all four of these there are four in line they were all full as of yesterday the rains have stopped for at least this whole week so far so this one is now empty as you can see we're gonna go through a lot of water but I have this one set up I have the valve open if it rains it'll feed into this and then this valve is now closed so it'll force feed everything that comes down the downspouts into this one and fill it back up and my next time for watering I'll empty another barrel maybe a lower one that way I can gravity feed everything down and we're plumbed in here really basic very simple we're plumbed in from this side of the house 
And this is just the back side of the house. The front side is, is not catching water at all. You have some gardens that are not in use right now. Most of them are not. So I have to reframe this one out because when we did it, it was a quick throw together. We had some pallets, threw them in there, and as you can see, they're crumbling. This is the other side. You can see the pipe. It's coming directly off the uh, rain catch up there and into those barrels. And the girls want to say hi. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi, girls. Hi, Chuck Chucks. Hi, Chuck Chucks. Yes, say hi. That's Bubbles right there. She's my big girl. And the black and white ones are Pebbles and Sandy. And then the really pretty red one is red. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah, we shouldn't have named them. It's going to be hard to eat them when the day comes. Right now, there are my egg layers. They're molting, so you can see a lot of feathers laying. And when a chicken molts, they stop laying. So right now, they're pets. <laughs> till they start laying again. These are my blueberries. I did give them a haircut this um, past week and I'm growing those haircuts. Here's my um, garlic. I got a nice set of garlic here. Cucumbers. I got my potatoes planted right in here. This post here is a divider to let me know where the potatoes are. They're right in here. And oh no, potatoes are right in there. Sorry. <laughs> And then I have a pepper here, another cucumber, and then this whole area here is carrots and radishes if they come in. I have a tomato that was a volunteer that I found over by one of my mango trees. So I planted it. We don't waste anything. Along this fence, which is my trellis, is a sugar snap peas. This was... This here was, I think, zucchini. I've had absolutely no luck with zucchini. Something's eating them, and they just don't seem to like it down here. So I've had no luck with that. And then this whole patch here is going to be spinach if it, if it comes through. Yes, my garden has a lot of bark mulch in it. It's been in now almost a year. It is breaking down. That's why the soil is getting so nice and dark. So it is breaking down nicely. And um, that's pretty much the garden. The tree I'm under is a pigeon pea tree. If you've never tried pigeon peas, I'd highly recommend them. They're super easy to grow in a warm climate. So we're in um, central Florida and they're gonna do really well, really, really well. I planted three together in a group. And then down the hill a little further, I have another two. And they seem to be doing just fine this close together. As you can see, I keep the center pruned out pretty heavy. That way light and air can get through these trees. A big mistake a lot of times is people planting trees and not maintaining them. You gotta prune your trees. My big trees here, those are moringas. If you've never learned about what a moringa is, it's a super green, super nutritious food and one that I highly recommend if you can grow it in your area to grow it because it's full of vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are vital to us. So in a grid down scenario, this is gonna get dried and powdered and it'll go in drinks, salads, soups, whatever we can put it in. Right now, I will come out and harvest some of the leaves and put it in a smoothie, because I, I do smoothies every day. Here's my other garden. That's where all my compost goes right now. And as I throw compost in there, some things will sprout, some things don't and the chickens stir it up. So that's just a, a garden. Literally, we're building soil in that garden. And that's how I did, that's my coffee grounds with the filters. Yes, that filter will break down. We've been doing that for years and we get the coffee grounds for free. And this garden, this part of the garden is an old compost pile that I had and then I spread it out. And this will be a really vibrant garden once I get enough plants going to get this one up and running. Yeah, I got some weeding to do, but they're not in the garden. That's the key, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can see I have rain barrels all over the place. There is a barrel full of water over there. And it's been full for probably two years. Maybe someday I'll get a pump and be able to empty it into a garden. I don't know. We'll see. I got all kinds of baby trees out there in the distance. My goal is to fill this whole lawn up at some point with trees because this is one heck of a yard to mow because I have to mow down this hill. And it goes down to the creek, which is down there. 
Yes, I called it a crick. <laughs> this drains, this is actually drainage from a swamp that is in the back here. There's a huge swamp back in there and it drains down through these guys and drains through this. And then if they follow this, this will drain into a lake that's down the road from us. So we have a lot of water sources here. All right, that's my garden update for now. And um, we'll check in with this every couple days and see if I got any sprouting. Have a blessed day. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Yes, you are. You're so cute.